Hang on, an Intel i9-9900K 8-core overclockable desktop CPU in a laptop? Yep, that's right. Let's take a look at performance, overclocking, and of course thermals to see just how well this beast of a machine runs. For testing, I'm using the Metabox P750 TM-G, which is the Clevo P70 TM1 laptop, so you'll find it branded under a few different names around the world. It's available with a 6-core i7-9700K desktop CPU, but also crazily enough the 9900K, which is what I've got here, along with GTX 1080 graphics, so quite a powerful laptop. Before we get into the benchmarks, let's talk about thermals and overclocking, as this will help you better make sense of the results. All temperatures were tested with an ambient room temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, and there is a single heat pipe between the CPU and GPU, so a change in temperature of one may affect the other. These are the stock clock speeds and overclocked speeds I was able to set. I wasn't able to set speeds above this, so there does appear to be a limitation somewhere. But as we'll soon see, this is largely irrelevant due to thermal throttling. The stress tests were done with ADA64 and the Heaven benchmark run at the same time, in order to try and fully utilise both the processor and graphics. And this is resulting in thermal throttling on the CPU at 98 degrees Celsius. Even with varying settings, including maxing out the fan, boosting the default 95W TDP limit, or undervolting the CPU by minus 0.1 volts, nothing changes in this workload in terms of temperature. But it was a little cooler in the gaming tests at stock, but we see thermal throttling once we boost the power limit and apply the undervolt. There are no separate tests for gaming with the fans maxed out, as they were already at maximum in this test. These are the clock speeds for the same tests just shown. In the stress tests, we can see that the clock speed of the CPU rises by around 10% once we undervolt the CPU, boost its power limit, and overclock the cores. Although the overclock isn't actually doing anything here. The all-core turbo speed of the i9-9900K is 4.7GHz, and this isn't being hit here in our stress test. The best we can reach is 4.4GHz on all 8 cores, so still not bad, but this does mean that overclocking in sustained multi-core load will not benefit us, as we're not even hitting the max stock turbo boost speed due to the previously mentioned thermal throttling. With that background information out of the way, I'll start off with some CPU-specific tests. So applications like Blender, Cinebench, Handbrake, and Adobe Premiere. And then I'll move into the gaming benchmarks afterwards. We're only looking at raw performance here. Don't forget to subscribe for the full review of this crazy laptop. We'll kick things off with Cinebench. At the bottom of the graph, I've got results for the i7-8750H. A typical current generation 6-core laptop CPU just for comparison. Next up, I've also got results from an i9-9900K in a desktop PC at stock, so we can get an idea of how the chip performs outside of a laptop, as we are of course subject to thermal throttling under high multi-core load in our laptop. Finally at the top, we've got the laptop result with a minus 0.1V undervolt applied, the power limit boosted from the default 95W TDP, and with the cores slightly overclocked. But as mentioned before, this does not seem to benefit us in multi-core load. However, some of these tests don't use all cores in a sustained manner, so the boosted clock speeds can actually be reached in some cases. Most of the performance gain is from the undervolt, as that allows the CPU to run cooler and clock higher as a result. And all tests were run with the fans maxed out to attempt to reduce thermal throttling as much as possible. Anyway, in Cinebench, the desktop 9900K at stock was only 3% ahead of the laptop chip once optimized, not bad. Compared to the standard i7-8750H we see in most laptops though, the 9900K was a massive 65% better in multi-core, and 16% better in single core. Pretty crazy. Adobe Premiere was tested by exporting one of my videos with the default high bitrate preset. Interestingly in this test, the laptop 9900K was just able to beat the desktop PC 9900K result, likely as the overclocks were able to be reached. Either way, fairly similar performance between them. When we compare the best result from the laptop 9900K, it's completing the export 28% faster than the i7-8750H. I've also tested Adobe Premiere's warp stabilizer, with just one clip at a time, so this is where we should expect to see single core performance shine. Sure enough, the overclocked laptop 9900K is able to complete the task just 2% quicker than the stock 9900K in a desktop as I was able to boost single-core speeds from the stock 5GHz to 5.2GHz. 
and then 19% faster compared to the 8750H, which tops out at 4.1GHz in single core. Next up we've got Blender, and there's a pretty nice difference here. In the classroom benchmark, the best result from the laptop 9900K is 45% quicker compared to the 8750H, and then 46% faster in the BMW benchmark. Compared with the PC though, the PC 9900K was about 10% faster than the best result of the laptop in the classroom benchmark, and 9% faster in the BMW benchmark. Not too surprising, as this is pretty hard on the CPU, so throttling on the laptop would be in full effect. I've used Handbrake to convert a 4K video file to 1080p, and then a separate 1080p file to 720p. Interestingly, the 1080p test on the PC 9900K is about 5% faster than the laptop. But then in the 4K test, the laptop is around 6% faster than the PC at stock. When compared with the 8750H though, the laptop is 65% faster converting the 4K file, and 54% faster with the 1080p one. 7-Zip was used to test compression and decompression speeds. Not too sure why my compression speeds on the 9900K are a bit lower though, but I don't have that CPU anymore to double check that one. The best result from the laptop was seeing 80% faster compression and 79% faster decompression when compared to a typical 8750H, a pretty massive difference. Veracrypt was used to test AES encryption and decryption speeds. Unfortunately, I haven't got 9900K PC results for this one, as I used a different version of Veracrypt, so the results aren't valid here. Comparing the 8750H to the best results from the laptop though, the laptop was getting us 60% faster decryption and 50% faster encryption. The V-Ray benchmark renders an image using the CPU, and with the modifications to the laptop applied, we're actually able to match the 9900K in the PC at stock. Pretty amazing for a laptop. Comparatively, the laptop 9900K was 35% faster than the 8750H in this test. The Corona benchmark also uses the CPU to render an image, and visually, the results are looking pretty similar to V-Ray. In this test, the best result from the laptop 9900K was 42% quicker compared to the 8750H, while the PC was 8% faster than the laptop. The desktop 9900K can of course be overclocked too, and much better than what we saw possible in the laptop, as generally there are much less thermal constraints. But I still think it's excellent that in many of the tests, the laptop 9900K was able to match and sometimes beat a 9900K in a PC at stock. Now let's take a look at some game results. These tests were run with the 9900K at stock. I did originally plan on testing all games at both stock and with the Undervolt, Power Limit Boost, and Overclock supplied to the CPU. But after testing three games, I saw about the same performance. In some cases, a couple of FPS worse or better so it didn't seem to help much, if at all. Fortnite was tested using the replay feature, and we're seeing some pretty crazy frame rates. Over 400 FPS averages at low settings, and even at Epic with everything maxed out at 1080p, it was still 145 FPS. Battlefield 5 was tested in campaign mode, rather than multiplayer, as it's easier to consistently reproduce the test run. Even at ultra settings, we're still able to hit 100 FPS, Turn the settings down a little lower, and we're ready to smash gaming with a 144Hz display. CSGO was tested with the Uletical benchmark, and again we're seeing very good results here. Over 300 FPS averages even maxed out, with above 400 possible with minimum settings in this test. Assassin's Creed Odyssey was tested with the built-in benchmark, and although it seems to be a poorly optimized game, we're still able to average around 60 FPS at ultra settings. And considering the game doesn't really need a super high frame rate to play, this is quite good. Far Cry 5 was also tested with a built in benchmark, and these are the best results I've ever seen in a laptop. Easily able to pass 100 FPS averages at ultra settings, and around 140 at low. Rainbow Six Siege was another that was tested with the built in benchmark, and as a benchmark that runs very well on modern hardware, we're seeing some very nice results here. Over 200 FPS averages, even with ultra settings, with the 1% low still sitting at 144 FPS. I'll be covering more games in the full review, so get subscribed to see that one. I've used my thermal camera to check out the areas where you'll actually be putting your hands, and at idle it was in the mid 30s. Pretty normal. While gaming, it got to about the mid 40s in the center, cooler than I was expecting, and then very similar results with the CPU and GPU stress tests running. With the fans maxed out and undervolt applied, it's perhaps just a touch cooler. As for the fan noise produced by the laptop, I'll let you have a listen to some of these tests.
At idle, it was fairly silent, only just audible. While under stress test, it was a little louder than most other gaming laptops I've tested. And while gaming and with the fan maxed out, it was quite loud. With serious hardware like this, you'd expect almost non-existent battery life. It's got a fairly large 82 watt hour battery. And it is removable, so in theory you could buy more and quickly replace them as needed. While just watching YouTube, I got 2 hours and 36 minutes. And 1 hour and 5 minutes while gaming. Not great, but I've seen similar with cheaper laptops that had lower specs too. When it comes down to it, the major limitation here, as expected, is thermal throttling. With that said though, it is still possible to get near 9900K in a desktop PC at stock performance in a laptop, which is extremely impressive. Especially when you consider that about a year ago, I looked at the 8700K model of this laptop, which was thicker and had two power bricks instead of the one we've got here. So not only is it smaller, it's also more powerful. This is still thicker than your average laptop, but it's not actually too bad. I could easily see myself travelling with this machine and using it to smash video editing and exports. Unfortunately, it's got to go back before I go to CES, so I'm not able to put it to the test in the real world. So what did you guys think about a laptop with an i9-9900K? Granted it's not for most people, I still think it's impressive that it even exists at all. I didn't see it coming based on the temperatures I measured in my 9900K test PC back when the CPU launched. It does cost a fair bit, but it's still not as expensive as I thought. You can find up to date pricing linked in the description. As Metabox are an Australian company, prices are in Australian dollars. So for just over 3000 Australian dollars, or 2300 US dollars, we can get a 9900K laptop. Though price will vary depending on the other components you select. Would you buy a 9900K laptop? Or are you just fine with normal laptop CPUs? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe for the full review of the laptop, as well as for future tech videos like this one.